Hi, this is Jenny Langley, author of the New Mold Speed Training Manual. In this clip, we'll be looking at exercise 1.6 from module one, which is working with a joint understanding about basic facts about eating disorders um, and also recovery. So um, much of this is contained in Janet Treasure's skills-based caring book, um, which um, you can get from Amazon. Um, and in chapter one, there's information about risks and maintaining factors. And in chapter two, um, that covers common myths and beliefs around eating disorders. There's also all the charities. So in the UK, for example, we have Beat, um, which has lots and lots of information on its website um, about the um, sort of symptoms and treatment protocols and, and, and lots of background information um, on eating disorders. So there are five main questions about any illness. So what are the symptoms? What are the causes? How long does it last? What are the consequences for the sufferer and close others? Um, and how controllable or treatable um, is the illness? With eating disorders, there's, there's so many different types. So almost like every single person with an eating disorder, that is a type of eating disorders. But of course they get categorised into anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, um, otherwise specified feeding and eating disorders. You might have atypical um, eating disorders. Um, so every case is unique. Um, but the common theme is that there will be issues around food and extreme anxiety levels. It's not about how much the person weighs or what they look like. It's, it's this intense anxiety um, around food and, and control or otherwise around food. Um, so really, really complex illnesses. There's no one cause. So people say, what causes an eating disorder? There's never really an answer to that. So some families might say, well, there was this trigger or that trigger. Um, but much of it is just genetic bad luck. And there's been lots of research on that. Um, and then there'll be some sort of trigger. So it might be exam stress, it might be friendship issues, it might be a traumatic event, um, it might be hormonal changes. So no coincidence that eating disorders often pop, pop up through puberty. Um, it might be chemical changes in the brain triggered by all sorts of different things. Um, and it can be just going on a diet. So somebody who's got a genetic predisposition to an eating disorder can find that just going on a diet can start that cascade into the world of the eating disorders. Um, so often within the workshops, there's um, there's lots and lots of different examples of um, the different types of eating disorders. Um, so a range of ages, genders um, of sufferers, different diagnoses, um, different comorbid conditions such as self-harm, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, um, anxiety. There might be diabetes, there might be suicidal ideation, um, learning difficulties, etc. So, so all sorts of things and it can feel a little bit overwhelming to start with. So some useful points. The approach that we use, the new Maudsley model, is really useful for any situation in which there's high anxiety. So it doesn't matter um, what the diagnosis is or what the background is. Diagnoses can change and they often do. Um, so what's important is that the carers learn to keep calm rather than getting caught up with what is the diagnosis. Um, so they keep calm, provide con um, consistent, unconditional support to their loved ones without judgment or criticism. Um, Every case is unique. Um, how long do eating disorders last? Um, well, with our son, it was about a year and a half in total. Um, research will tell you from six to 12 years, that comes from sort of specialist eating disorder centres. Um, but certainly with the younger patients, if you catch them quite early, which with our son, it was all very quick, um, then the course of the illness can be much shorter. Um, so the key thing is that sufferers who have a really good support network around them are much more likely to recover more quickly. Now, the question that often comes up is what is recovery and how many people recover? So um, there's again, there's lots and lots of different reports around this, but a recent BEAT report suggested um, that 50% of anorexia sufferers will make a full recovery, 30% will learn to live with their symptoms and lead a good quality of life, and 20% will continue to really struggle with their illness um, and have a more restricted life. And sadly, a proportion of this last category will have a shortened life expectancy, um, and there may be sudden death through organ failure and suicide. Um, and it's really important to understand that it's generally it's it's patients who don't get any help or support who are more likely to be in that latter category. So recovery means lots of different things to lots of different people. So with me, with my son, it was basically when he could be back playing football and it was a really passionate thing again. It wasn't any obsession over exercise. And there was one defining moment where he took a penalty and he missed it. And it was a really important penalty. It would either win or lose that cup final. Um, and he didn't even, wasn't even saved, he just missed it and he was okay with that. He said, well, we played our hardest, I did my best, I missed the penalty, so that's a shame, but but we 
had a really, really good time. So um, through the workshops, we have lots and lots of different stories of recovery. Um, and the carers learn to understand that, you know, it's not just about getting the child back before they had the eating, eating disorder. It's about that young person learning to um, build new coping strategies. Um, and they might come out actually being more confident, stronger, more challenging. They might have more empathy for others around them. So there's a big, big learning process as they go through that recovery process. So on the worksheet, there's also some um, links to some really useful videos that you can watch. Um, so thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you can make good use of the manual and the worksheets um, and all of this series of videos and all of the worksheets, remember, can be downloaded from www.thenewmaudsleyapproach.co.uk. Thank you.